from a First Nations worldview, indigenous worldview, we're part of nature. We don't own nature. You can't own Mother Earth. You can't own these things. Human beings are part of a natural ecosystem of the planet. And through our arrogance and our misguidedness, we've seen ourselves as separate from nature. And in fact, we cannot do that. It's really nice to see that um, climate and nature are now being spoken about in, this, in the same conversation, because it really is, they're really two sides of the same coin. The entire global economy is fundamentally embedded within and dependent upon nature. We can start to build in incentive structures that can um, create financial or other incentives for people to restore ecosystems and make it a lot more expensive to degrade them. By rebuilding our ecosystems, we recharge the water in the aquifers, we lower the surface temperatures, we do carbon sequestration in a meaningful way. Will it bridge the gap? There's a lot of arguments that it won't, and, and that's okay. It doesn't have to solve the entire problem, but it's so critical as an underpinning piece of the entire problem that we have to focus on the ecosystems first. The biggest um, effect of climate change in Madagascar is the loss of biodiversity. 5% of world's biodiversity only exists in Madagascar and 80% of our biodiversity is endemic. Last year uh, at COP we signed uh, an agreement that allowed us to plant more than 3 million trees. This year we, our main objective as a com social company is uh, to close the funding to plant uh, 14 million trees in 2024. By protecting a country such as Madagascar, we are protecting the world. Because if Madagascar biodiversity disappears, there will be consequences in the rest of the world. You know, at the end of the day, Earth is just a big village. If we really want to tackle the size of the problem, the two trillion tree backlog on degraded lands, we really have to think about what other technologies that we, we need to bring into it. Drones is a great example of how you can use it for assisted natural regeneration. At COP, what we're mostly focused on is bringing the technology to the small-scale landholders around the world who have typically been completely locked out of accessing technology and all of the basic markets that go with that, carbon or otherwise. We're not on track uh, to achieve 1.5 degrees under the Paris Agreement. And I think one of the biggest missed opportunities is that there wasn't much cooperation with indigenous peoples during this first implementation phase. We also want to see climate finance that is directed towards forests. When we look across our carbon stores, forests are number two after oceans. And so they play a huge role in regulating the global climate. They impact our uh, water cycles, they impact our regional and our global agricultural economies. And you know, a couple of our major tropical forests are at a tipping point. Indigenous peoples are at the heart of forest conservation and they have been the, the, the best stewards of our forests. Um, and we need to empower them, we need to recognize their rights, um, and we need to have them at the table uh, making decisions. O estado do Pará é um estado que, infelizmente, é, um estado que, é o estado do brasileiro que mais desmata. Então é recorde de desmatamento. Trazer a voz da Amazônia, trazer a voz dos povos indígenas do Brasil, né, e dizer que nós queremos fazer, nós somos a solução é, para a crise climática e que nós queremos fazer parte também das negociações. We can't just talk anymore. It's, it's time to get the the doing done. That's what we hope to come out of this this COP.